Ok, entonces me espero bien. Ok. Welcome everyone to this session of the Quantum Classical Statistical Physical Physics Seminar. Today, Dr. Raul Hernández Montoya presents us his talk <laughs> Some statistical properties of financial time series and on the University of Statistical Wealth Distribution. He received his doctoral degree from the Sendistat and a postdoctoral from the University of Torino. Nowadays, he is a professor researcher at the Centro de Investigación de Inteligencia Artificial from the Universidad Veracruzana and a member of the SNI, where his research line is in the st stochastic process, complex system, computational physics, econophysics, and more. From those on the YouTube channel, at the end of the presentation, Dr. Raul Hernandez will answer the question you leave us. Well, let's get to the talk. Hope you enjoy, and thanks for presenting us. Thank you very much for the presentation and also for the invitation to give this talk. I am very happy to be uh, virtually with you. It would be better uh, in French. Seems this pandemic problem is going to continue a long time. And okay, the title of my talk is Some New Statistical Properties of the Financial Time Series. And this is a different topic on the universality of statistical wealth distribution. And uh, in fact, let, let me to present you my collaborators. Uh, Dr. Rasio Tapia from my university, uh, David Hernandez, one PhD student, Dr. Thomas Seligman uh, from the C Center International of Sciences, Carlos Manuel Rodriguez is a PhD student, and Sohan that must be out. And uh, I'm going to show you the motivation of my uh, talk. One question, how, how time I have for that? How long is it going to, to last the conference? Anytime you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, will, it will be short, don't worry. <laughs> and, uh, okay, the motivation is uh, the stylized fact. And oh. one particular stylized fact that is the loss gain asymmetry. I'm going to talk about this in a moment. And I'm going to show you that uh, some kind of returns of a financial time series have a um, bimodal distribution that this, uh, this is a new result. Uh, I am going to speak about the problem of world distribution and about the universality of this uh, world distribution. And I'm going to present one example of world distribution uh, emerging in the game of life and some conclusions. And uh, I'm going to show you the result of these two papers. This is thermal and superthermal in common classes in, the, in a well-alike distribution in other, generated by Conway's game of life, the cellular automaton. And that this is published this year in the Journal of Cellular Automata. And the second paper I'm going to discuss with you is titled A Multi-Scale Symmetry Analysis of Inter Uninterrupted Trends Returns of Dining Financial Indices. And uh, this is to be it's going to be appear uh, maybe at the beginning of next year in Physica. Okay, uh, I know most of you are familiar with the, the meaning of stylized facts. And, but anyway, I'm going to, to speak just uh, briefly on them. And Stilize Effect is a fancy name that uh, from, from the economy uh, area, economics is, economics is give to the, uh, some kind of uh, statistical properties of financial time series. And these properties are very interesting and, and, and are universal. It means they show up in all the financial uh, data. And uh, the most well known, maybe this are this. The, if you take the returns, if you take one time series of prices, for example, 
eh, stocks or currencies or commodities, whatever, prices. And you calculate the, uh, the returns, that uh, uh, quantities, uh, one observable used to uh, measure the uh, variability or the, um, okay, how the, the, the prices change. And you can uh, uh, calculate returns taking differences of prices to any fixed scale or taking the rate, the ratio or log differences, whatever the many def definition definitions. And if you calculate the autocorrelation of returns for any financial time series, uh, the autocorrelation function is flat. Uh, it's zero. Or uh, it decays to zero in question of minutes. Uh, if you take the return distribution, uh, you will see that it, uh, the tails decay as a heavy, as a power law. Uh, you will see, okay, this is a, a stressed fact that everybody uh, uh, observes, but sometimes it's not easy to, to appreciate the gain loss asymmetry. But this means that if you have one financial time series, for example, the Dow Jones or the prices of any stock, and you, you will see uh, big variations, uh, bigger and faster going down than those that go up. And it's uh, an important uh, property of financial time series. And only that it's telling you is that it's easy to destroy than construct. And okay, there are a lot of uh, variability in this uh, financial time series. Uh, usually we work uh, with returns directly with prices is difficult because time series of prices are not uh, stationary. Volatility clustering, it means uh, when you have big uh, fluctuations of price of prices in the market they uh, appear uh, in clusters when, for example when you see uh, this small graph, one small graph uh, in one earthquake you will see that big fluctuations uh, come in clusters something similar happens in the market and you will see also okay okay that in the point one absence of autocorrelations, if, if returns were independent, you could take any function of returns and you had to observe the, the same property of absence of autocorrelations, but that doesn't happen. If you take, a, <clears throat> for example, absolute returns, you will see heavy pairs of the autocorrelation function. That means uh, returns are not independent. And uh, this is also a very interesting property. And there are many, many. If you want to see a nice paper uh, enumerating these properties and explaining very nicely this topic, you can uh, look this look for this Ramacon paper. Uh, if you need uh, this paper, I can mail you to you, mail it to you. Okay, the importance of return symmetry. You, plot the return distribution, you will see that seems symmetric. Uh, we will see this later. Uh, this is important on the point of view of trading because you must uh, look to open positions when the symmetry is not very strong because if one distribution is symmetric, you will, returns are symmetric, you will see that the same probability of winning or gaining is zero. Right? Sorry, the same probability that the winning and, and losing, uh, and you will not will be able to to obtain any uh, gaining of this in this market. Okay, uh, since the asymmetry of financial time series emerge when they, there are bull, bull and bear rallies, and also when there are extreme events. Okay, this, this point yeah, I explained it before. Already and uh, under the uh, uh, a microscopic point of view, I mean, under a point of view of people that uh, study 
market uh, on the uh, simulation, for example, it's important because if you have a simulation model of a market, you must reproduce these properties, in, uh, for example, the gain loss asymmetry, and investors prefer uh, portfolios with positive skewedness. Okay, and here, because I am working in a project to become our, our institute, to our center institute, uh, and I was not expecting to do this, uh, I'm going to show you directly the paper. Sorry for that. But they, they did this. In this uh, explanation, I use daily returns. I mean, returns calculated uh, in daily data. And only you have to do is take one day, next day, the next day I calculate the log difference of prices for these two days and then repeat this operation to obtain one new time series uh, constructed uh, by using the prices. And then you propose a symmetry point. It means a point where uh, the probability distribution of returns has the same area to the left and the right. And uh, you, you propose the symmetry points and you calculate the cheaper returns. You subtract the symmetry point to the returns, to the user returns. And then you use one, you calculate one statistical that is was proposed by in one paper in 2006. But I'm going to show you the paper. Sorry for this. But uh, in this paper, there are two uh, main results that I want to mention you before. We introduce a new kind of returns we call multi-scale returns, which show that the distribution of these multi-scale returns have a bimodal or bimodal distribution. It means you have two peaks, and we calculate the evolution of the symmetry point uh, <clears throat> on time. And this paper, uh, because we showed some very uh, new results, uh, many referees re re reviewed this. And at the beginning, they didn't understand. And th then uh, at the last, we spent a long, long time uh, waiting for a final result. But finally, uh, the, the paper was accepted because it, the last referee say that is the results are very okay. Okay, this is the paper. The scale symmetry. In fact, I put the modality on the title after some thinking. And let me show you the new returns we construct. For this, you have a time series of prices, for example, this is or in the indices values, you have the Dow Jones index, and you have this time series of the Dow Jones. This is only the sample, one sample from 1991, November 1991 to January 1992, only to, to show the this idea. And if you have a, a consecutive, a, a, Okay, if the market is moving many days in the same direction, this mean, means the price is increasing two or three or four days, we record this. For example, here the market going down one, mark, one day and then going up two days, and then it was, went down two days, and then up one day, and then went down one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six days. And we calculate only the difference between the maximum and minimum of these uh, daily trends. These are uninterrupted trends because they are formed by a consecutive uh, increasing or decreasing market days on price. And for example, here the price went down, went, went up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten days. And then you construct one new time series calculating the log difference of these maximum and minimum values of trends. For example, you calculate this return of 10 days. 
I mean, the log difference between this point and this point, the log difference with, between this and this, and, and then you calculate, you obtain one new time series with returns where different scales of time uh, are incorporated. For example, here are 10 days. Uh, we use 10 days for construct this return, and here two days, and here more days. This is on one return. You calculate here one return of one day, and you obtain one time, time series with different scales, in, time scales incorporated. And after that, you can calculate another kind of return that is this, in this case, is only calculating the return and dividing this between is this is duration. If this return, for example, calculated from this point and this point lasts 10 days, you divide it by 10 days. And you obtain some uh, that reminds some kind of velocity, how fast the returns grow, increase or decrease. And these are the plots of these returns like daily. These are daily returns. This is the plot the we, we, we name it trend returns, T reds or T returns. And these are the T velocity returns. Velocity because they remind one velocity because you divide one, some kind of distance between. And this are, is the comparison of all them. And you can see that uh, returns on trends are much more bigger than the usual daily returns. And this is easy to understand because these returns uh, if you wait 10 days to calculate one return, uh, depending on the, if the market goes up or down, uh, you expect a bigger variation of the market. And then <clears throat> in average, these are more, uh, these, have, these three returns have a bigger amplitude. And then we can see the return for the markets we study in this paper that there were the DAX from Germany, the Dow Jones from the United States, the IPC from Mexico, and the Japanese Nikkei. And these are returns, or comparated in the same plot. Returns have, yeah. has, have no unities, so you can compare them in the same plot. And these are uh, returns also put in a log log plot. These are the Trend returns calculated from the trends, and these are the this this figure shows the trend returns for all the markets studied, and these are the T B returns, those that were divided by the corresponding duration, and you will see that there are like model. This is the same plot and log scale, and there are you can see some uh, descriptive statistics of these returns. And you can see the returns, multi-scale returns for different uh, time lags. For example, this is the these are the trend returns, those calculated from the uh, uninterrupted trends. And you can see for one day, this some kind of okay, these are normal returns, you have the red line for two days, meaning you are um, uh, just recording in this plot all the uh, two uh, duration, two days long front, uh, returns. These are the blue pointed line is, okay, correspond to the returns that last three days. And these are the, the green one is the return that last four days. You can see the plots on the problem. And then you can see that for one day, the distribution is expected, but for two days, three days, four days, you can see they have a bimodal distribution. And these are the trend returns. These are the trend returns. These are the TV returns. And this same happens for every uh, analyzed market. And the explanation of this is very easy. You have these returns 
the statistic for returns one one day duration is much more bigger than return for two days, three days, four days, whatever, longer than one day. And then this signal mask masks the signal from the bimodal uh, distribution of the other multi-scale returns. And then this is the the way you can not appreciate this phenomenon phenomenon easily until you uh, do this anal analysis. And the explanation for this bimodality is easy to understand. If you have uh, in average re the returns calculated from two days, when the market goes up to consecutive days, you expect that this uh, return be bigger than returns corresponding to one day. If you calculate returns from uh, up or down trends uh, corresponding to three days of duration, you expect that these uh, <clears throat> returns uh, are will be bigger than the returns of one day and so on. And when you see uh, when you 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 see these returns, uh, because the, these returns are bigger, uh, there is a lack of uh, statistics around zero. They increasing and increase as you take a uh, time lag bigger. And this is the, the origin of the by modality of these returns. That is some kind of nice because nobody observed it before. <clears throat> and then you can see that these returns show a nice bimodal distribution. And uh, we must uh, still to, uh, do more analysis, statistic, uh, statistical analysis of this uh, kind of returns. Now, about the symmetry. And you can see that the symmetry is mm, some peak of the distribution is bimodal distribution is higher than the other peak. Now for the <clears throat> uh, symmetry points, let's see. Uh, this is the condition of the null hypothesis for a symmetry of the distribution of returns or whatever you are analyzing. And then the time scale of the bimodal distribution, you can observe it after two days of, uh, after taking returns with two duration uh, days. I mean, when the market goes up two consecutive days or two consecutive days down. And then, <clears throat> You, you see here the condition for the model for symmetry. And you can see here the definition of cumulative distribution and the statistics or the test for statistics that was proposed by Eamon McKee is this. He proposed one statistic that is defined like this, where H is the expression that is a bit complicated. And then uh, the cumulative distribution of this statistic is calculated. And the thing we do is only, okay, we calculate these points with another method, but you, you, you can see the paper that where we do this is uh, one paper of 2006, a bit old. And the methodology is propose one symmetry point take the returns, uh, new returns, where you also subtract these symmetry points, or propose the symmetry points to the, <clears throat> uh, the normal returns, and uh, use this table of the list to uh, estimate the symmetry points uh, that uh, satisfy its a degree of uh, confidence level. And 
in this way, you can calculate the one interval of symmet possible symmetry points, and the point that minimizes this statistic, we call the most plausible symmetry point. And this analysis was performed to this data. Let's see here. <clears throat> to the different uh, multi-scale and useful returns. And you see here the TN statistic. This is in the line, uh, the, this is the line red, red line. And this is the, <clears throat> the different, uh, I call this, the, the points corresponding to the statistic, the uh, probability points. And you see that this statistic for the different symmetry points cross the 5% uh, confidence level here. 5% here and here. And we use 90%, okay. For 90%, this is the interval of symmetry and the minimum is the most plausible symmetry point. And we perform the same analysis for all the markets and for all the different <clears throat> um, multi-scale and normal returns. And these are the results, the symmetry points, and the maximum, oh, oh, okay, the optimal symmetry point, or the most plausible, plausible and the interval of symmetry. And we can see here the evolution of the symmetry point. <clears throat> for the different markets, this is these are the evolution of the symmetry point for the normal returns distribution for the Dow Jones, the IPC, DAX, and Nikkei. And you can see that it oscillates with this interval of symmetry close to zero, but not zero. In some points, it's not symmetric at all, around zero, because if you remember. It's very hard to make a, a, how to say, to beat the market consistently. And there is one hypothesis that is in the physical market hypothesis that it says that you cannot, okay, there are different uh, kinds of this hypothesis, but it, 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 that it says is that you cannot beat the market uh, consistently in no way possible. <clears throat> but here, this market is not symmetric. <clears throat> Like in some points, the uh, market shows a very interesting behavior. This is the Dow Jones, the PC, uh, DAX, and the K for uh, uh, their returns. And these plots correspond to the same markets for the returns, for the multi scale returns divided by their duration the TV returns, we call it. And you can see that these are much more symmetric than the, these returns or the usual returns. <clears throat> and of course, the referees ask us to show the symmetry uh, variation for the, when the market suffers extreme events, and the events we analyze it, or we uh, <clears throat> discuss in this paper are the Japanese asset price bubble, the 1st of January of 1990, the tequila effect in December 20, 1994, the dot com bubble that uh, collapsed, the market collapsed in March of 2000, the subprime crisis start in August of uh, 2007, and the Brexit. The Brexit was not a crisis, really, but it caused a big fluctuation of the market. And you can see the different uh, crises here. For example, for the this B, you remember the B was the oh, okay, I more memory the kill effect dot com subprime and brexit okay <clears throat> this is the tequila effect the, the market come down okay the symmetry came, came 
ne came down, but not negative, negative. And this is C. And you remember C, I have a not very, very big memory, I. In fact, I cannot concentrate in two different things at the at same time. Dot com, dot com is here. This was very bad. The symmetry of the market was went down very uh, badly. And this is the dot com. The dot com was worse. You can see here. And the subprime was, mm, seems very bad. Yes, it was. Ah, oh, the subprime is D. Yeah, sorry. And this was very bad, you can see. But the symmetry uh, point really uh, is very sensitive to extreme fluctuations, you can see. And of course, you can use this methodology to try to get some money from the market. Usually, traders, when they uh, <clears throat> use some algorithms or indicators to try to beat the market, they use different at the same time, many, no, not only one, maybe two or three or four. And okay, this is the all of this paper. There are some appendixes with some more explanations, but the nice thing of this paper is that we show an statistical property of the market that as until we know, no, it's not has not been reported yet. And we introduce a new kind of returns that for the trend returns that are here, sorry, trend returns, they correspond for extreme variations to the Dragon Kings console net. And figure returns, they are new completely <laughs> until we know, until our knowledge, we think these are completely new. And also the reporting by modality of multi scale returns is something that is not supported also until our knowledge. Okay. Now, if, if you you can make one question now, or we can expect we can wait until the end of the talk. But the next topic is about the wealth distribution, and also this is an universal property of an, of an economical data, and we will, I'm going to speak about this. Yes, Hakan. In fact, this is the last version of, of of the paper. You know, yes. Uh, yes, yes. So, just one question: When you are uh, plotting this time series, so you you uh, normalize it somehow with uh, time because the different uh, for the trend. So, trend have different times, right? So, you plotted just the return of different times. That's all. This plot? No, at the first plot of the time series when you plotted the time series of the return. Oh, the first plot. Okay, let's see. First plot is. Yes, this, this plot. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 the next, next, the plot with the return of the time series. Sorry, time series of the return. Yes. So, yes, yeah, so, so different return have different uh, time scale, right? Some return is of five days, some return is of three days, some return is of seven days, and so on. So, did yeah. you, while plotting this time series, did you somehow normalize it with time, or it just plotted the way it came? Uh, we plot it in some way uh, as the returns were a function. I mean, for example, imagine a return of 10 days. One trend that goes, mm -hmm. for example, up, the prices goes up 10 days, and then uh, you take the difference between the, the trend and first day and play this return. But you also can put the return from the first day, second day, adding to the first day, third day, adding to the to the to the uh, second day, and then and so on. Because user returns detect differences. I mean, if you calculate the user returns for one trend, 
that that goes up 10 days consecutively, you take first second day less first day, third day less second day. But in this case, you add the returns. It's so it's the same, but at the end you will will have okay. The events are the the, the events are the returns for multi scale from 10 days, but for the plotting you can proceed this way. And you can compare this and this for the plotting. And because the scale is big, you cannot find any difference between the way you plot. This is a okay. So uh, this is this is the different. So this is the return of different days. My my point is some return is a five days, some return is of three days, something like yeah, that, right? It could be this from six days or then ten days. I don't know. But these are daily and these are multi-scale. But you can plot them in the same scale. Vertical scale. Okay, thank you. The second question, what I am asking is that uh, is the distribution of these time scales have been studied? Yes. These distributions or better this one. These distributions. So this is the distribution of the returns, right? Yeah, but okay, but here do they are uh, displayed. Uh, and separate uh, separating by their time lag and by their duration. For example, here <clears throat> you put all possible returns from different time lags in the same distribution. And here you put you, here only the returns corresponding to one day. Here the returns corresponding to two days, here to three days here to four days. And these are different histograms, histograms. And in fact, because we have not enough, enough statistics to show more time lags, but at the end you will find one distribution separated from other distribution corresponding to the ex most extreme events of this uh, return. Of this, uh, okay. Uh, yes. Active events, yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I, I was asking that the uh, the distribution of this time lag that have been uh, that have a specific structure. For example, some trend is of three days, some trend is of five days. The distribution of these numbers three, five, seven, okay, for which yeah, for this time lag if, for if the long years that that have been studied. In fact, we have studied that. Uh, Carlos showed me some plots, and but, but we left because left it because. He must graduate and I must to write projects. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to proceed now to proceed now to show you the this paper, thermal and superthermal in classes in a well aligned distribution generated by Conway's Game of Life through Automaton. And you can down, download from this journal, Journal of Cellular Automata corresponding to this year. And these are my, this is my PhD students from mathematic uh, faculty, from the mathematic, mathematics faculty and other colleagues. And let's see, I don't know if you are familiar with what is a, a cellular automata, but I can explain you quickly. Uh, okay, this is the second part of the talk. Um, as I told you, we are going to speak about the statistical well distribution. And the point or interesting point of this uh, topic is that you know that well distribution of one country or society or uh, whatever, for example, companies, companies, there are some companies that are richer than other companies. I mean, bigger, for example, the biggest uh, company maybe is Apple, and there are other smaller. And but uh, you can see the the uh, value of these companies at the, the richness. And <clears throat> if you take, if you plot in one histogram or the cumulative distribution function, uh, the wealth of uh, population of people or uh, 
companies or countries, for example, how rich are different countries, you are going to obtain the same uh, distribution. Uh, and this distribution has a log uh, distribution, uh, let's see, in the, for the richer uh, population, the distribution is a power law. And for the medium and low income uh, uh, region, is a Gibbs, exponential Gibbs, or a gamma, phys physicists say it's a gamma, and economists, economists they say it's a log normal. Also, <clears throat> this distribution uh, has two components. One component for the richest population is a power law for the medium and income and low income population, the gamma or exponential. And then uh, uh, the interesting thing is that this same distribution or this the same uh, components of distributions, I mean a uh, exponential and a power law, uh, this appears in different phenomena, not, not only in economics, only in other systems. And I want to say that, or I will say that this universality is much more uh, universal, or much more powerful than, than only in economics. I mean, uh, <clears throat> if you have a system where the agents exchange something, money, information, energy, whatever, and this system is enough, enoughly uh, complex. You are going to, to obtain the same these results. You are going to show this distribution and or this uh, combination of distributions. For example, uh, I the, the paper I show you this one is. Uh, this paper is analyzed one uh, cellular, cellular automaton that is named the Game of Life, and the Game of Life is a very interesting system with a lot of properties. But uh, if you are not familiar with, 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 when, okay, with uh, a cellular automaton, or with a cellular automaton, it's only a system where you have cells, different cells on one lattice, and every cell may have or can have in one state the number of, of states every cell can uh, adopt are, uh, okay, usually are discrete, but can be continuous. <clears throat> and these states, uh, uh, the, okay, depend of the, every cell state de depend on the states of the other cells that surround it, surround it. And okay, and the lattice can be, can, can, can uh, adopt different uh, geometric combinations. And folks, uh, and then, um, uh, and the neighborhood that uh, <clears throat> determines the state of this, of the cell, central cell, uh, can have a, a, a geometry that you can choose. For example, this is a very simple automata, cellular automaton in one dimension. The lattice is only one line with different cells. And this is named the rule 30 because the number, uh, binary number. And the rule is only, okay, the basic, the, the neighborhood for, for, for of every cell is only their uh, closer neighbors. For example, this cell has two neighbors. This cell has two neighbors. And the rule says that if the, every cell, oh, it says if the cell is in a black state, black could be zero and one, and white could be one. If the cell is uh, in one black state and all the uh, cells of its neighborhood are black, in the next generation, the cell change, the central cell change state and becomes white. And this, uh, 
the instruction here only says that if the cell, the central cell, cell is in a black state and its right cell is white and its left cell is uh, label is black, in the next generation it will become white. And all these instructions here are component are the components of the rule. The rule is the dirty rule. And if you apply this rule to every cell in every uh, consecutive time, you have the, this evolution of the cell automata. The time is, uh, is pointing down. And for example, this cell here is black and has two white cells uh, as a neighborhood, as a neighbors, sorry, and they are white. And the, the, the rule says that the, the, the cell will become, or will, will, it will stay white, black in the ne next time. So this cell becomes, okay, doesn't change its state. Continues uh, as a black cell. And okay, you can play with computers and get very nice patterns with this automatas, and there is a classification that uh, according to the rules, they can have a, uh, they evolve to one uh, fixed state or one quiescent state where after that doesn't happen or they are periodic, the, the behavior of the automata is periodic or chaotic or complex. And there are some emergent properties and here are some rules that I suppose they adopt. So they are uh, classified uh, following the classifi classification of Wolfram. This uh, reaches a limit point. This is periodic, this is chaotic, and this rule uh, makes the, automata, the automaton becomes uh, one automaton with complex behavior. And you can play the same game in two dimensions and you have different kind of neighborhoods for different cells, for one cell. Okay, this is one neighborhood called Moore, the radio, radio zero. You have a Moore neighborhood or radio one, here's one or two or three. And the central cell has a contact only with these first neighborhoods and here with the second neighborhood and uh, third neighborhood, whatever, no? And the von Neumann only considers, the, the von Neumann co neighborhood only considers the cells up and, and to the sides. You can call the north, uh, south, east, and west uh, uh, cells from the central, uh, uh, relative to the central cell, and you can increase the size of the neighborhood for uh, to reach a bigger uh, to say uh, interactions with the other cells uh, increasing the neighborhood of the this automaton and the game of life was invented by John Conway he passed away a few months ago and that was a, a very sad thing because he made a very nice he was a, a, a great researcher and he has two very nice books of uh, complex variable and he was a very original mind, but he invented this serial uh, automaton game of life. And uh, this game of life uh, lives in a rectangular lattice. Uh, it uses the more neighborhood with radius two, this one, one, sorry, this one, to make interact the different cells of the universe of this automaton, the lattice. And the rules are this, a dead cell will be reborn at time sigma plus one, means in the next time generation, if this, in this neighborhood, there are exactly three alive cells at time t, okay? Then the second, the component of this rule is a living cell will survive till time t plus one if in his neighborhood, neighborhood at time t there are two or three alive cells, and the last 
a component of this rule is a living cell will die at t plus one in any other case. And if you go to the computer and you look for game of life, you can find a very uh, nice simulation of this cellular automaton and you can have a good time just uh, watching how the cellular automaton evolves. And we have some previous work, one paper in 2011, where we show that using the game of life, you can reproduce all silicic facts uh, that uh, the market displays. And that's a very nice thing because with this cellular automaton, you can reproduce all the silicic facts of financial economic time series. And we wrote a chapter for this book that is a, is a, a resume of the state of the art of the research on, of, on game of life, but in 2010. So time passed very fast, run, runs away very fast. And we have this paper that is from 2009 with Horacio. That in, in this paper, we analyzed the a diffusion process that emerged very naturally in the game of life. In fact, it's a Brownian geometric work, a process. It's very, very interesting also. And okay, maybe this is, these plots are very nice. You can see how the market, okay, fast. fast. You have the lattice where the game of life evolves. You take, calculate, a, you put one uh, coordinate axis and you calculate the central mass and you follow this central mass as the uh, market, as the game of life evolves. And it's easy to calculate the distance from the central mass of the every state. This is one step of the game of life. You can, you can consider that, it, uh, you can imagine the living cells has a unit mass and calculate a central mass of this configuration. And if you do that, you can see a very nice random walk in two dimensions. And if you project, you calculate the distance to the origin of this two dimensional random walk, you obtain something very similar to the prices in the market. And then, you can see all these slice of facts here. But this is not the interest of my talk, but this is the problem of well distribution. I, uh, I'm very interested in this problem because it's important for the uh, preservation of the civilization. Uh, there are, uh, uh, in the last year, very, very uh, heated discussions about the inequality of in society, economical inequality. And this topic is very uh, delicate. People uh, uh, is sensitive to this problem and it's very politicized also. But the thing is, if you limit yourself only to show, to observe the data. And in fact, there is data that uh, from societies, very antique societies, or uh, estimation of the income in all societies like the Egyptian or the Greeks or the uh, uh, colonial Mexican, okay, Hispanic colonial uh, colony in Mexico or in the, in the time of the world, Mexico, New Spain, you or in with using modern data, you will see the same. You will see for the medium class and low income class, a big or low normal distribution. And for the richest uh, part of the population, one Pareto. And this book, this figure, or this, this figure was taken from this book. And uh, Economists say that this part of the distribution is a log normal, and physicists 
Seit is, no, is, is a log normal, okay? So the point of view to analyze all these uh, systems, economical systems, is as if they were uh, one a statistical physics system, and you analyze the data, for example, for the uh, income, and this is very interesting. For example, this is the data corresponding to the American uh, society from different years, for example, the 80s, the 90s, the only 90s, 2000, I remember the word 2000, but I cannot see. Okay, 2000, 2001. <coughs> and you see that for the, okay, the, the, the distribution, okay, the income distribution evolves, but uh, it uh, maintains the same shape, the statistical shape. For example, in the 80s, 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 you see this uh, Boltzmann Gibbs distribution for the low and, and the medium uh, class classes in America, and for the richest uh, population, you see the Pareto, and for the 90s, you will see that the distribution uh, changed, but still uh, maintain the same shape. The power law for the highest sector of the population and the Boltzmann gift for the medium and low classes. And this data is uh, taken from the IRS office and wa was taken from this paper. Jacobenko and Silva in Europhysics Letters in 2005. Okay, and the same phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomenon emerged in different uh, uh, systems, for example, plasma physics. They observe one combination of Wolfgang Gibbs and Pareto distribution, also in heavy young collections. Uh, uh, observing the distribution of momentum transversal, or uh, also in magnetospheric, uh, uh, okay, high uh, uh, atmosphere uh, phenomenon, and they observe also the same distribution. And there are more, for example, for example, in collisions PP bar of lead, uh, lead ions, they observe the same phenomenon, I don't know, charged particles, or when they measure the rank, the, the, the ranking of different pop songs in Germany, or in the model, or now Congo Games of Life. And in all these phenomena, phenomena you observe this combination of uh, one gamma or exponential and a power law. And these are the papers I just mentioned. <clears throat> and these are the gamma and power law distributions for this uh, dynamic extension of two component models. Exponential and power, they observe a double power law. And for the IC model, if you count how many times every cell change a state. The, the interesting cases for the critical state Critical state, and you account how many times the the every chain cell change state. Um, for example, you consider if the spin of the cell goes up, and the gain of one uh, unit of money and it goes down, down, the loss in one unit of money, you will see the same distributions. One, you will see the gamma, and you will see the power law here. Power law, gamma. And a Gaussian, when you uh, consider the IC model, IC model in for high temperatures, and this is the well distribution in terms of the game of life, and and this point will be nicer to show you the paper. <clears throat> and these are the plots. You see the plots for different. Uh, Okay, so let's see 
this is the same, but in different scale. This is well distribution. That's the distribution comes directly. This is in a log vertical scale, in a log log scale. And the thing we do, what is the same? You only consider every cell of the game of life as if we were one individual and you account how many times uh, it changed state. In fact, every time the every 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 cell change the one state, for example, become white, white we uh, put one coin in that cell. <laughs> and then we count how many times it was changing. And this is the histogram of how many times was occurring this event of changing its state. And some cells change the, its corresponding state very fast. Some cells uh, change the, its state uh, less frequently. and on, and you have these nice distributions. This is the <clears throat> one distribution for one of these experiments. Uh, <clears throat> you see this nice peak here. This is an in a log scale. You see that this part seems a okay, it's a, it's a, a straight line in a vertical log scale, and in a log log, you can appreciate one power law. <clears throat> Okay, this is only trying to observe that the same distribution was uh, not changing with the size of the lattice. That it will be important, and these are the different models we we uh, consider for this paper. The Gibbs Boltzmann that is really an exponential. The gamma is an exponential with this exponential with this power factor, and the log normal is used by the economists to uh, model this phenomenon and the power law. And then <clears throat> you see here the points are the data, data. These are log log plots of this so-constructed, also called well distribution. <clears throat> and you see the medium and low lower part of the distribution is well fitted with a gamma. The red line represents a gamma. The blue one represents a log normal. The green is a power law. This is a power law here. And this is a effect of the a size of the lattice. In fact, the lattice was very big, 3,000 by 3,000 cells, 9 million of cells in the overall. And this is the statistics we observe. We fix the game of life initially, initially, initially with as a density of living cells, for example, 20% living cells initially before to, to make the game of life evolve. 30%, 40%, and 50% living cells. And these are the cells with one income or, or one uh, wealth lower than the 60, and this upper than 60 because it changes six times. Okay, you will see the histograms. And this is the region for the power law. Low, medium, high income is bigger than 60. And we only consider until 2000 uh, changes of the state of this system for every cell. And this is the gamma, the cumulative distribution of the gamma. Okay, the cumulative distribution observed in the gamma line, the empirical distribution, the red uh, points, sorry, the black points. This is the gamma. This is the log normal. Gamma is in red, the log normal in blue. And you can see here that both both uh, plots of both models seems very nicely, but if you consider the CDF cumulative distribution function of data versus gamma and this uh, scale and this uh, plot, you can see that the uh, gamma model is much more better than the log normal. This is log normal, and this is the gamma. 
Okay? Here is an scatter plot of, of the well commutative distribution function empirical and the model defeated one. And you can see that really the gamma is a better fit for the data. Okay, and, and you can see all the parameters and the errors for the fits here. And this is, okay, this, all these plots correspond to the medium uh, and lower class classes of the uh, game of life wild distribution. And these four plots correspond to the uh, richest cells of the game of life. And you can see that the, the, this well distribution corresponding to the wealthiest part of the um, distribution is really a power law, a nice power law with these exponents 1.72 for the 20% uh, initial life cells. This is for the 30%, for the 40% initial life cells, and this. 50% alive cells, and uh, these exponents are very similar. And what is this? Okay, the fit, all the parameters, and the error, g square. Ah, and also we calculate the Gini. Yeah? I didn't remember that. The Gini component, the Gini coefficient, the Gini coefficient is an uh, estimator of how well the how bad or good is the inequality of one uh, society? If you have a very high Gini co uh, coefficient, the society uh, increases its inequality. If the Gini is one, it means one person owns all the money or all the rich, uh, all, all the assets of all the other members of the population. And if the gene is zero, all the agents of the society, they have the same amount of uh, wealth. And then, <clears throat> in fact, the gene is very similar to the observed in real economical data. And, okay, this is one different plot that is shown in all the economical systems, the learning curves, but, okay, let me, come back to the talk. And this is the world distribution by, by obtained by the game of life. And okay, this can wait and that's it. All these plots I'll show you in the paper. And we did the same in one dimension, but in one dimension seems uh, you cannot observe power laws. I mean, one different cellular automata, one dimension, rule 110, whatever. But they show some nice behavior that it could be worth to explore. Um, the conclusions, okay, maybe I was not very uh, sure about what to conclude, but uh, well distribution, or I mean, the the statistic shape of well distribution, I mean, one gamma distribution for the low and medium income population and power low for the richest one, seems is a, a very important emergent property of complex systems. If you have a complex system that is enough complex, okay, uh, it's not trivial, for example, the uh, ideal gas uh, is, doesn't show a power law, it's only, it shows only, uh, uh, if you do this same uh, considering energy as one economical asset and you simulate one, the, the one model like, like the ideal gas, you will obtain a, a gift distribution, an exponential, but not a power law. But if you have a more complex system, this combination of two distributions, uh, gamma and uh, power law, will emerge naturally, naturally. Really. And there are many instances, many examples of this behavior. 
Okay, in game of life, it's a very complex system. Okay, maybe it's the simplest complex system that shows this richness of behavior showing this emergency of, of a combination of distributions if you analyze the, the system in this way. Okay, one thing I mentioned you previously that was that gamma is the model that physicists prefer to model wealth distribution in society and economists, they prefer the uh, log normal to model the medium and low uh, segment of population, medium and low income segments of population. But game of life says it's a gamma. <laughs> okay, gamma fits well the distribution, the well distribution generated by using game of life. The log normal it could be used, but gamma is a better fit, as I showed you in the plot. In the one dimensional case, it seems this phenomenon uh, is not present. And it's interesting that the medium and low class of the population, they are um, people that usually depend on one income uh, by one salary. I mean, the, the income depends, for example, on one payment. And the richest part of the population, usually they are uh, people that own companies or business and there are the process here of different process of creation of, of wealth and for the exponential like in the ideal gas we see that emerged from the phenomenon that there are reallocation of money they are change people buy different things and pay with them and so the money pass from one part to one different part. And here the, the, the process of wealth is different. And then I think, okay, uh, returning to the economic systems seems the wealth distribution is some emerging property. And the, the shape of this wealth distribution is a, uh, this power law and Gibbs combination uh, emerge naturally from the system. And if you want to finish with this inequality that many people is, uh, is, is discussing uh, in every part of the web or books or whatever, uh, the system, the, the phenomenon is more complicated than they think because uh, it depends on the interactions, it depends on the economy, it depends on people changing things. You cannot uh, change this way, this shape, because it's an emerging property of the economy. Uh, <clears throat> you can finish the, the, you can increase the income of people following different mechanisms, but this statistical shape is an emerging property of the system and uh, <clears throat> is going to be present in any system with the with an enough degree of complexity. And I think is this will be a all the thing all the things I have to say to you and I appreciate your time and your um, uh, Persons here. Thank you very much. If you have questions, and I hope you still are listening to me because. Yes, Thomas. Okay, well, uh, thanks for the talk, first of all. Yeah, I have a question. I mean, it related to the last part. So, this part. Oh, sorry, just um, to the Power law, to the exponents of the power law distributions for this ah, game right. of life. The so some, somehow it depends on the initial density, right? No, since there are very plenty. Or 
very purely. Let me show, let me show you the plot. Okay. 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 Close it, but I can open it again. Okay, we're at here. Symmetry, Jonas Lot, and let me show you the exponents. These are the exponents. Mm -hmm. 1.77, 1 1.84, 1.87, 1.78. Yes, so, so you, you think it's, but these are significant differences between the the powers you found, or you think I don't not? think so, because we use this only to see okay. the density, initial density of this. Um, yeah, well, that was somehow my question because I'm expecting that after some time you you arrive at the universal density, right? Ah, okay, maybe which is always the same. I forgot to tell you to mention something. This cellular automaton is very big, nine millions of cells, and yeah, okay, these are the distribution job obtained, but after some time. I start to see periodical phenomena. There are some structures that are periodical, and these structures are a noise for your analysis. And then we only generate 500 generations, only observe 500 time generations. I mean, we start the, the game of life, and after 500 time generations, we stop it. For this, you can see this small amount of changes on every cell. Stage, stage 60 or 100, because we stop very fastly the error automaton. But about your question, this is a, a this exponent, I think, now is. Okay, imagine and you start one zero automata and after some time you start zero automata choosing for configurations where you have four forty percent of initial forty percent of living cells and it could be one of the configurations you start to 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 your system. Okay, we use a uniform distributed living cells, but uh, until I am uh, observing things, this exponent doesn't change a lot. I, I don't know. Uh, in fact, uh, I need to make more analysis to see what is going on. But, uh, OK. I mean, sorry. there is, of course, uh, this is a related question, right? I mean, to what extent this is stationary? So, when you start with your uniform density in the board of Game of Life, then the first uh, uh, several hundred steps, it's not really, it's not a stationary process, right? Because um, it goes from a uniform distribution to some distribution which is uh, much less uniform, much uh, clustered and so. Okay, I can ask where your question with this uh, old analysis we we did. Let's see. I I mentioned you that in the some years ago we reproduced the uh, slicer facts using the game of life, and the thing we <laughs> do was was consider one. <clears throat> a coordinate x axis in on the center of the lattice of the game of life and then uh, imagine okay uh, calculating the center of mass as li if living cells were uh, points of unit mass and then we obtain this cellular this, this random walk and if you consider the uh, distance of the every point of this uh, random walk to the origin, you obtain this uh, 
evolution of this uh, distance to the origin of the center of mass. And these random, these random walks are not stationary. In fact, in any point, it's not stationary. You observe trends, mm -hmm. for example, and down trends. <clears throat> and the thing that is stationary is the difference, or log difference of these points. This is stationary. Mm -hmm. But the evolution of these states that you see these microstates, and these microstates has a lot of information. If you record the state of every cell, you need the two elevated to the n multiplied by n uh, bits of information, where n is the uh, cells contained in one of these sides of the neural automaton. And then <clears throat> when you average every cell, okay, every, uh, when you calculate the center of mass of this configuration, you lose a lot of information. And you transform this mm -hmm. state that has a lot of bits to one state with two bytes. For, two bytes are the components. Yeah. So you lose a lot of information. And for this for this transformation, you see this as it were random. You cannot pass from these states to the micro states of the white and uh, black cells. But okay, when you can consider the distance to the origin, you lose more, even more information. But the interesting thing is that when you do this, this time series is not stationary. It seems never is stationary. <laughs> okay. That okay. happens is that after 5,000 uh, <clears throat> uh, time step, the automaton starts to die. So the fluctuations okay. become smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can see this here. Maybe it's here. This is the X and Y axis. And these are the points of one, uh, okay, the center of mass of every microstate of the cellular automaton. Mm -hmm. The time goes mm -hmm. in perpendicular to this X and Y plane. And the fluctuations are dying and dying and dying until yes. they died. And the, okay, in this case, if you can see, you can observe fluctuations. You can observe still fluctuations, but there are maybe 10,000 generations, you see very small fluctuations. And for the reason we cut off all uh, data in, in 5,000 generations, time generations, for the paper that we report where we can produce the uh, slight facts using the game of life. But mm -hmm. the the system doesn't become stationary. Really, it dies, but yes. since yes. it's uh, non-stationary all the time, <clears throat> permanently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. OK. Yes, Marco. Sorry, I couldn't read the... Can read uh, yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, Daniel Vargas uh, asks, so we can conclude that inequality is an emergent uh, property of the economic system, and uh, we cannot eliminate it. But this analysis can provide us some hints in order to minimize it. In fact, this analysis is only uh, 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 more uh, uh, more evidence, okay, other evidence or addition, an additional evidence that if you have a enough complicated or enough the degree of complexity, you are going to observe these properties. But uh, economy is much more complicated than game of life. But the thing is that experiments do 
change this distribution are been uh, done, uh, have been uh, performed, but uh, they were not very successful. If you want to change, or you want to cancel, cancel this part of the distribution, or this part, is, you must forbid all interactions. And think is not easy or recommendable to, to forbid those all interactions between agents. But anyway, more research must be uh, uh, additional research must be done and executed or performed to, to obtain more uh, elements to, to say anything. But from the empirical evidence in economical systems and in a different kind of physical and uh, mathematical and even formal system, because game of life is a formal system, is a not it is a not it's not a real system. It's a mathematical formal system. You can see that if you have interactions and enough complexity, you are going to to observe the same phenomenon. Okay, you can. Surely there are other uh, sieves, uh, several automata that doesn't display these properties, but it uh, will be interesting to see why. But when you have less complex several automata, you don't observe this uh, well distribution. You observe more sim simple things. But seems <clears throat> This is this universality property, universal property of wealth distribution is more universal than people think. Think. Yeah, it's very interesting. On my point of view, it's very interesting because you observe the same shape in many, many phenomena. Let me see where I put this in plasma physics on uh, uh, accelerator this how other production how they this uh, heavy ion colliding physics or in social physics like in the uh, <clears throat> ranking of pop songs or in the ma ma atmospheric magnetospheric physics or in the IC model, like IC model is a, is a formal model, but I guess ferromagnetic materials will uh, have the same property, real ferromagnetic systems and the coming of light. So this universality is, is a really impressive on my point of view. <coughs> I don't know if you have more questions. From okay. YouTube, we don't have uh, any other question, but we have a comment from Antares2040. He or she says, good talk and greetings from Ciudad Juarez. Sorry, I, I in some point, if, if I couldn't listen to you. Uh, no problem, just a greetings from Ciudad Juarez from someone which name is 2040 Antares. Okay, sure. Ah, there are people that is. Uh. Okay, well then, maybe let's uh, thank Raul and uh, stop the transmission to YouTube. Thank you very much for your time, and I am very happy to see you here. In fact, uh, mm -hmm. in, in this time with the pandemic uh, situation, is uh, many many meetings are be, being cancelled and now this is the only way to keep in contact with uh, friends and colleagues and I appreciate your time and your right. attention. <clears throat>